this is not the way to go. This is this is, your 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 thinking's off, and I I don't I don't want to go to South by Southwest for that. I don't, right. I don't want to go get in a debate with anybody, and you know it's just uh, I I want to go I, I want to go because of the music, and that that's why I go. And, you know, sure. Now I just make, ran an article. I just ran an article out of a uh, it was a uh, a British music news, and uh, they were talking about. Uh, the revival of the political folk music uh, climate, which basically carries me back to uh, the days in the 60s when uh, Bob Dylan and Peter, Paul, and Mary and a lot of the folk, well, actually before that with uh, Pete Seeger and some of the others uh, that Dylan's. really got into politics. And, exactly. And they injected politics into the music. Now, uh, any opinions on that? Do you have any opinions on that? Uh, well, you know, at that at that point, it was a different time. You know, I, I remember Country Joe. It was a Country Joe and the Fish too, as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 They. I mean, they. I mean, there, there, there was. I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta say, like, I, at that point, you know, the the Vietnam War was going on, which you know, a lot of people were against us going into. So it was. I, I think. I was okay with that back then. It was a different time, you know, but I, I don't see anything going on at the magnitude of what was going on at that point, because, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the Vietnam vets, bless them, they've, uh, I mean, they lost a lot of friends out there and, you know, they, they were just, they were recruited as 18 year old kids, you know, and just, Hey, you're going to sure. war and some never came back. So I, I can kind of see back in those days, the, the anger, you know, that was in the music, but, I don't. I mean, now I. I mean, I mean, it's not as bad as people make out make it out to be, you know. And I mean, from people faking faking us, uh, faking hate crimes and things like that. That's not. That is not a good thing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And you're you're seeing this. Uh, you're seeing this move into the uh, everyday conversation there. Besides just uh, the the speakers and things like that, you're you're seeing this politicizing come into the everyday conversation yes yeah i mean it's 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 happening and you know and it and it's basically just one direction you know so it's not yeah that's that's unfortunate as i said i don't i don't agree with it being injected into an arts event to begin with and then when it's all one-sided that's even worse i would uh i would do i would like to see done what the uh what the Oscars tried to do this year. Uh, they didn't succeed, but I think they watered it down a little bit and they said they were going to try to depoliticize the Oscars and make them less political. Uh, I think they, uh, they did move in that direction while not being totally successful. I, I think that the, that's something an artistic event might want to concentrate on is uh, holding back the political posturing. Uh, uh, again, like I said, I'm very strongly of the opinion that an arts event is there for the arts. It's not there as a political stage. And uh, if I were running a uh, an arts event like that, whether it's music, uh, uh, what type of arts it was, I'd want to see, uh, I'd want to see that particular art pushed and not somebody come in and start you know, trying to sell their political uh, yeah. political views. Exactly. I, I think that the, the simplistic way of looking at it is, you know, virtually all the major problems that we have in the world today and have had over the years is a direct result of someone or some group of someone's trying to enforce their opinion on somebody else. And uh, that exactly. that's what causes most of the problems there. But, uh, yeah. I thank you I mean, so much, yeah, I mean, David. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I, I no, I enjoy I enjoy doing this every time. So I, I appreciate you uh, you having me come on, you know, and do and do this. I mean, it's a That's, it really makes me happy to do this. It's really great having you here. We enjoy it. We love you. You're part of our family, and I thank you so much for joining us, sharing your opinions, your insight, and uh, giving us a little bit of the feel of South by Southwest. And uh, I pick one out of the vault to close the show out with this week. This is a song that uh, I'm not sure what year this was out, David, but uh, perhaps you can help me there. But this was a song that I heard uh, several years ago that uh, got my, brought my attention to a uh, to a Texas singer 
named David Martinez. It's a thing called Hey Mary. Tell us real quickly about that. When was that out? I released it. I went to Nashville and recorded it in 2010. So it was released November 2010. I wrote it about. I wrote it about my experience in Hollywood because I was recording. I recorded all my records out there, and my first record. I was working on my first record, but I, I was the place where I would where I would park was a Greyhound terminal, and you saw all these people would come from all walks of life, you know, and it gave me an inspiration, you know, to, to write something like, "Hey Mary, I took a bus from Alabama to L.A.," you know, and and you know, I, but, I remember when I so first heard it when I first. When I first had you on the show, I remembered comparing it to the uh, to the rocker Walk on the Wild Side. A little bit of the same type yeah, of yeah. message, same type of feel there. David, thank you so much for being with us. We look Appreciate forward to talking to you, you again real soon. Ladies and gentlemen, David Martinez, and here's his classic, Hey Mary. Hey, Mary, that's David Martinez right here on the 
David Bowers Awards, and uh, so so much fun. David is such a such a great guy to talk to, such a great talent, and uh, love the fact that uh, regardless of what happens the rest of the year, he's always here, always stops by to give us the latest on South by Southwest. He's become our man in Texas, and we thank him so much. Check him out online. You can find him. Simply Google David Martinez or David Martinez Music, and uh, you'll find him. Check out his music and uh, drop him a line. Uh, you'll find him, as I said, all the usual places, and he'd love to hear from you. John Bon Jovial, I think it's. Uh, I think we've done about all the damage we can this week. Why don't you uh, crank up the old flivver and take us <laughs> home? Yes, sir. Well, folks, you've done it again. Once again, you have spent another quality hour with the David Bowers Awards, and we are grateful to have your attendance this week and every single week, that's for sure. The David Bowers Awards is broadcast around the world from the studios of Computer Help USA in Naples, Florida, and of course the Valley of the Sun in Tempe, Arizona, and is absolutely free on Blog Talk Radio, also YouTube, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, Amazon Alexa devices, and really just about anywhere you get your favorite podcast download. Click the follow link on our Blog Talk Radio page and please be sure to like The David Bowers on Facebook as well as Twitter. Join us next week for The David Bowers Awards Saturdays at 12 p.m. Eastern on WRFZ FM 106.3. That's Rochester Free Radio. And on Blog Talk Radio Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and 7 p.m. Universal Time Coordinate for more great indie music and talk with the artists and make it all happen. So until next week, for the David Bowers and Nick the Geek, our marvelous engineer, I am yours truly, the legendary John Bon Jovial, saying uh, we'll see you next week. Love everybody and love yourself as well. Until then, thanks again for listening to the David Bowers Awards. <laughs> <laughs>